Late Night Movie Magic, Fridays on Theater 9. Now begins its programming day. Yes, SCTV is on the air. Starring John Candy. Joe Flaherty. musical guest, Rough Trade. It's December the 1st, and I'm starting to hurt, cause I can't get a date for New Year's. Twenty years I'm later, the neatest sound of the 50s, from the neatest guys of the 50s, come back to life I in a spectacular new album. Sandwiches. Fifty of the neatest hits from five of the neatest guys. Yes, it's the five neat guys, neatest hits. Remember, let's have a party in my rec room. Let's have a party in my rec room. And on the same album, I won't take just any girl around. Because Patsy has the largest press in town. Also here, should I kiss her goodnight? My mom framed my high school diploma. Slow dance anyone, and she does it. Does it? She does it. The whole town says she does it. You'll also hear my dad's car. Let's have a party in my rec room. Who put the pennies in my loafers? And I'm a goof in the classroom. I'm Guy Caballero, owner and president of the SCTV Network. Well, tonight's pledge night here at SCTV, and we're hoping you'll pledge lots of money to our network. Now, some of you at home might be saying to yourselves, but I thought SCTV was a commercial network. <laughs> well, it is. But just because it's commercial doesn't mean we're making money. <laughs> now, you people out there, I'll be honest with you. If you want to see good programming, you're just going to have to kick in and help pay for it. You know, these programs we watch here aren't cheap, believe me. So why don't you just do your duty and pledge money? Lots of money. You'll help keep SCTV in the black, and you'll continue to enjoy fine shows. Shows like this one coming up. I'm Brenda Vaccaro. I'd like to speak to you about something that means a great deal to me. <laughs> protection. Feminine protection. And I like that. <laughs> Personally, I need something that I can come with. <laughs> Uh, hi, Brenda. That was terrific. Just one sec. Who's on sound? Can we do something about that breathing? She sounds like a seal in heat. Mm. I don't know. Put a filter on it or something. Mm. Okay, mm. let's take two, dear. Brenda Vaccaro, take two. Mm. Mm. Cut. Cut. Hang on. What kind of filter was that? How am I doing, George? Fine, Brenda, fine, Brenda. <laughs> Will the sound man please cut the breathing out? She sounds like a moose with sinus problems. <laughs> okay, Brenda, honey, try it again and go right to the end this time. Thank you. Brenda Vaccaro, take three. I'm Brenda Vaccaro. I'd like to speak to you about something that means a great deal to me. Protection. 
feminine protection. And I like that. Personally, I need something I can count on. Something that only a woman can appreciate. Something gentle yet effective, even when I'm swimming, horseback riding, playing tennis, or hunting. So if you're obsessed with feminine gentleness, that only a feminine woman can know about what I'm talking about right now, then you'll understand why I personally endorse Friends Gen Femme Protect These Pods. The product that only a woman can know about. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, Gem Femme, protect his pawns. Hi, folks. Guy Caballero again. Well, so far this evening, those phones have been remarkably silent. Well, maybe you just don't care about SCTV. Maybe you don't care about fine quality programming. All right, then I'm going to give you a little taste of the kind of programs you'll be seeing on SCTV if we soon don't start getting some pledge money in here. Come on, boys, roll that footage. Take a look at this. Money counts on the ball now. Really is here, there, and everywhere in this game. That's right, soccer. Hours and hours of soccer. Is that what you want? Yeah, I knew those phones would start ringing. Nothing more boring than watching Manchester versus Liverpool or... Poppy Voda bouncing balls off his head. So you keep that pledge money coming in and we can get you some good sports shows. Shows like NFL football. We might even talk to Commissioner Pete Rosell. Broadcast a Super Bowl this season. That'd be great. All you gotta do is pledge the money. And while you're doing that, uh, here to tell you about some of the premiums you'll be receiving with your donations is our public relations director, Maureen Wallace. Thank you, Guy. This week, we're offering free, with every donation, a tour through the SCTV studio. With me is Mr. Ralph Gallo and his lovely wife, Portland. The gorgeous Graham sisters. They've all contributed. They're all coming on the tour. So why don't you come along with us on the tour for a while, and you'll get a chance to see what you may be seeing if you come up with the cash. Hey, uh, what's going on? We're about to take a tour through the SCTV studios. What's the cost? Oh, whatever you can contribute. Well, here's a dollar, sister. We'll take the round trip. Fine. Well, you see how easy it is to become an SCTV subscriber? Let's get started on the tour now, all right? Come this way. <laughs> this is supposed to be open. <laughs> I've lost to this. <laughs> you know, they do this to me all the time. I'm prepared this time. Excuse me. Back up. Back up. <laughs> I'd like to know who's doing this to me. They won't stop me this time. Follow me, please. Well, if you want the tour, you're going to have to keep up. as Gene Shalit's guest on Critic Special, coming up on SCTV. When the kids get ready to move outdoors, your best move is to Zellers, where outfitting the kids for spring is a breeze. This week, girls' coats with nylon linings and Canadian mist coats are just $19.97. These infant's fleece walk sets are just $10.97. For windy spring days, wrap them in wear-dated hooded bomber jackets, just $8.97. And warm, lightweight jackets for boys and girls are just $9.97. So if your kids are moving outdoors, get moving to Zellers. Zellers, only you'll know how little you paid. Come on along with Via Rail Canada on a mini holiday to your favorite Canadian city. Dine out, shop around and see the sights. Go on your own or take one of Via's exciting getaway packages, all of them priced to give you a break. Call your travel agent or Via. Take it easy when you're traveling. What we're doing, TV9. 
Welcome back. This is Pledge Week at SCTV. I'm Bobby Bittman, and let me tell you what a thrill it is for me to be here down at the studios uh, tonight uh, with all these marvelous people and talking to you about this marvelous cause. You know, money. That's what it's all about, folks. That's the name of the game. That's the name of that tune. Money. We need your pledge. You know, as an entertainer, I'm very aware of what it takes to put on a TV show. There's all sorts of production costs that you people at home, you just don't know about. There's, there's uh, above the line and, and uh, below the line. I don't want to bore you with it. Salaries. Salaries have to be paid for performers like myself. That, uh, that eats up a lot. So get on the phone. Pick up a phone. How? It's, can't, it's not hard. You pick, I'll show you, it's so easy. You pick up, hello! <laughs> hello! I'd like to make a pledge. I'd like to pledge some money. Oh, about $5. I, what? What do I get for my money, you say? Well, you could get a copy of The Total Filmmaker by Bobby Bittman. Cam, which camera? Can we get a close-up on this camera, too? The Total Filmmaker by Bart's very good reading and very intelligently written from what I hear. This is good. It's hard cover. 20 bucks made me a lot of money. You get it for five bucks. It's a good deal. So pick up a phone. It's so easy, folks. Let's go back and see what's happening on the phones right now. Listen, you know, as an extra bonus for that five bucks, you get to come down, you get to participate in the actual production of a TV show yourself because you'll be on the phones like these people. You go! Pick it up, sister. Well, they're not going to wait forever. That phone rings. You pick it up. So, you see, it's going to be a real treat for you to come down and be on this side of the camera. I'm not an you... animal. I am a human being. All right, hold it. Wait a second. Who called him an animal? Who called him an animal? Look, the elephant man came down here of his own time to help us out here at SCTV, and I, as a comic, in all seriousness, resent the kind of abuse that he has to take on the... All right, he wasn't blessed with hey, one. Hey, Bobby, I'm going to take this door out now. I'm going <laughs> to take it out now. We got another door coming in here, folks. I usually don't come on the camera, but I had to say hi to my buddy Bobby Pippen. Two eggs and excel sandwiches a day. I got to make a special fall with no mail. I got to do this. How you doing? <laughs> Hal Waxberg, ladies and gentlemen, runs the cafeteria here at SCTV. I don't know if you can tell Bobby, that he Bobby. runs. Don't do that. Don't do that. Bobby, I'm going to take a tour out of here now. Come on down. It's Blake. We give us a call. Come on down. Take a tour. How you doing? Come on. Let's go. See you later. Well, there you have it, folks. It's so easy. It's money. It's money. Is this uh, the spot? It's money, folks. That's all it is. Pick up a phone. We need your pledge. Because if you want to see the fine programming that you're used to seeing here on SCTV, it doesn't come free. Money makes the studio go around the studio. Go around. It takes money. So pick up a phone. Give us a call. And, uh, and, uh, what? We got... Is that... And look, see, another tour's in here. Come on. Come on a tour. Get out. Hey, phone in some money. This Thursday at 9, Gene Shallot, America's critic at large, in his first variety special. It's the beautiful... with special guest critics Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get that hair? <laughs> well, I think we find ourselves both agreeing and disagreeing. Right, Roger. So far, I find the show to be pretty fast-moving and very well-paced. Well, I have to disagree with you there. I think the show moves at a snail's pace, but one thing we both agree on is the lackluster performance of its star. Right, Roger. <laughs> I've grown accustomed to your face It almost makes the day begin I want to And read special guest star, the first lady of critiques, Miss Rona Barrett. Gee, I can't tell you what a thrill it is to have you on my first variety special. Gene, there's a definite dichotomy of emotions coming into play here. On the one hand, I'm thrilled as a journalist to be able to perform, but at the same time, embarrassed to be performing with a critic who should never have gotten out from behind his Smith Corona. We're a couple of swells. We stop in the best hotel. The 
Gene Shalit Critic Special. Singing, dancing, and biting satirical spooks. But, Mr. President, the Saudi ambassador will be here in an hour. And the Israeli ambassador refuses to sit beside him. Well, there he goes again. Double the oil in the salad dressing. He'll get the message. Well, there she goes again. Yes, don't forget to watch Gene Shalit with Bruna Barrett, Roger Ebert, and Gene Sisko. It's America's best love critics at their acerbic best. It's a great hour of prime access television. Shallot shines as the mainstay of the show, but Clark Spigoli gets paltry support from a mediocre backup team of second-rate armchair critics whose musical and comedic talents run the gamut from A to sweet sourdough bread. Sailing takes me away to where I always heard it could be. Don't miss the Gene Shallot Critic Special. If you can't pan them, Join them! Could you be mine? The Gene Shallot Critic Special, Thursday night at 9 on SCTV. Take this lovely pistol and kill myself. Short Story Playhouse presents O. Henry, later tonight on SCTV. the past and into a thousand tomorrows comes a car with the right stuff. The new Toyota Celica. Aerodynamically designed for total performance. Its sleek wedge shape cheats the wind. Its rack and pinion steering conquers the road. It's the new Celica. The right stuff for the right time, right now. Celica. Hi. My name is Lex McCrindle, and I'm president of the Rotary Club of Windsor. This is Corey Owen, Windsor's Timmy for the 1982 Easter Seals campaign. As a Rotarian, I've come to know quite a bit about Corey. For instance, I know that he really enjoys playing pool. Right, Corey? Yes, sir. That's good. So, Corey, I'd like to give you this. It's a cue for Easter Seals. Who receives Easter Seals, Corey? Everybody does. That's right. And we just want everybody in the Windsor area to please use them. Send in your donations so that disabled kids like Corey can make a better go at life. Both of us know that Windsor is the most giving city in the world. And we know you'll give this cue your best shot. Say, Corey, who's a better player, you or your dad? I am. You are. Please, won't you contribute to one of our most cherished causes, our disabled children? Thank you. Playoff bowling action continues this Sunday morning at 10.30 here on TV9. Last week, Lloyd Clark won his quarterfinal match against Bob Kitely to advance to semifinal play. In this week's semifinal, he'll meet number two seed and runner-up in last year's classic, Wayne Dump. That's Sunday morning at 10.30 here on TV9 for semifinal action in the Molson Masters Bowling Classic. Break. Just give us one sec. That was good. Nice and crispy. Okay, back bacon breaks over. Oh. <coughs> oh, great. Good day. How's it going, eh? Good day. Welcome to the Great White North. I'm Bob McKenzie. This is my brother, Doug. I already said my line. I heard. Okay, today's topic is difference between Canadian... Canadian football and American football, okay? Because, like, we got lots of people sending letters asking us uh, about the Great White North Football League. Okay. First of all, the main difference is, like, they don't play Monday night, right? Because, like, you've seen on TV, like, Monday night football. That's, that's American football, yeah. Monday night, okay? Uh, got great, something to do with the weekend, eh? Great White North football is always played on Sundays when there's fog. Okay? The other difference is that there's like, okay, whoops, some bacon flew out of my mouth. 
Okay. You pig. No, it was a, uh, an accident. The other big difference is, you, okay, you know downs? Okay, like, you know how first and ten, right? De second and five? What? I'm just checking to see if more stuff is shooting out. No. Top. No. Okay, in, in Canadian football, what? There's still some bacon on your teeth. Yeah. Get it out. Get it out. No, lower, lower. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, jeez. How much? Oh, How no. much what? Well, we don't have that much time. Okay, the, the, there's only three downs in Canadian football and five in America. He knows all about it. Four? Four in Canadian and five. Four in Canadian and five in America. He's an expert. Okay, we're out of time. What Blow the whistle. <laughs> Game over. Good day. Gee, that was a real clever end, man. Because we were doing football. He must have stayed up all night to think of that. No, he just holds his head. Oh, come on! No! Hey, my goop. Here, have some coffee, eh? See, not everybody brings in a sandwich, so I like to prepare a hot meal every day so people have something to eat, you know? Is, is that a Chapman cream? Oh, yes, it is, Elephant Man. And it was used in Polynesian town. I don't know if any of you saw that thing. All right, we're going to go down to the cafeteria now. Hey, Elephant Man, over here. We're going to go down to the cafeteria and have something to eat. Come on this way. I'll tell you something about the cafeteria. This <laughs> is my favorite part of SCTV. And if you take a whip, you'll know why. That's fresh turkey vegetable soup simmering all day long, only 40 cents a bowl. Now, if you look at this menu, you'll see we got a whole assortment of sandwiches. And if you got a big appetite, and I know the elephant man will back me up on this one, you can have the crew special. Only two bucks, a terrific assortment of ham and lettuce and tomato and cheese. Don't do that. Get your hand off of that. I just cleaned that. Hey, you did that on purpose. I did not. Hey, man, pick it on my brother. Hey, I don't want any trouble here. This is a cafeteria, not a boxing ring. Whoa, oh, I'm getting seasick. <laughs> Hey, watch it, will you? I got a shepherd's pie back there. Here, hold this. Anything, anything, take me a cake. ladies and gentlemen, doing a dramatic reading from Neil Simon's The Out of Towners. Oh, boy, that was scary. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Lloyd. Hey, tell me something, Lola. Do you usually read the whole play like that? Well, I find that I perform the final speech much better if I do the entire play to lead into it. Oh, well, that was blood-curdling, I'll tell you. <laughs> boy, I'll tell you something. It took up three-quarters of the play show. <laughs> I guess the people out there are so scared they forgot to phone in their pledges because the phones are awfully quiet back there. Uh, nothing's ringing, no okay, action. I've got a challenge. A challenge? Uh, yes, this is how much <laughs> I care about SDTV. For the first male who calls in, be he any race or color, if he makes a $5,000 donation, I personally will bear his child. <laughs> Did you hear that? That's a challenge to every red-blooded male on the continent. <laughs> That'll be the phone. Oh, here, maybe this is some lucky guy that's going to get a chance to roll around and have fun. Thank you. Hey. Oh! <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so, have you got the $5,000 to donate? You do? Good. So, what do you look like? <laughs> Well, looks aren't everything. I'm, sh I'm sure you have a very nice personality. <laughs> oh, I'm a wild and crazy guy. There he is. I'll call you right back. Hello, my little friend, Bruno.
Good afternoon. Welcome all of you to you. And thank you all very much for your response to yesterday's show on bikini waxing. We're going to give you the phone number to Lena, the best bikini waxer in town. Five months, not a single hair grew back. I was a poodle when I went in there. Then I'm in Acapulco, not a single hair. Anyway, I'm repeating myself. Call Lena, 555-5555. Call her. She's a doll. You won't be sorry. Anyway, a couple of notes on next week's show. Next week, all week, nails and lashes. Trina from Mary Nietzsche does me. She's coming here. She's great. She's the best one there. In fact, I said to her, Trina, why don't you open your own place? She said, what for? Look at Mary Nietzsche. She opened her own place, had a kid. Now she won't do a nail or a lash. She said, what if I want to have a kid? I said, oh, please, please, I got enough problems. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Today, we have got a show for you. Dr. Saul Rubin, psychiatrist, is with us to talk about a problem that affects so many of us women today, women's problems. Good afternoon, Dr. Rubin. Welcome. Have a seat. There. All right, let's get right to it. Hello. How are you? Very good. What in your mind today is the biggest problem that women face today? Well, Libby, as you know, women face a wide range of problems and have right through time. Our mothers and our mother's mothers all suffered a wide variety of problems, certainly indigenous to women. But I think we're correct in focusing in on the woman's problem, the woman in the 80s. The woman who is saying, hey, I'm aware that I'm living in a man's world. I'm prepared to cope with it, but I want to change it. What about weight? How does weight fit in? Weight as a woman's problem. You see a lot of women who are fat. Well, I have a lot of patients who are women, and many of whom suffer similar patterns of compulsive behavior. Some are overweight and some are anorexic. I would kill to be anorexic for one week. Can I tell you that? <laughs> anyway, continue. Well, I... Why you... can I not stop eating? You're a doctor. You should know. If there were a roll here, I would have eaten it. Is that not sick? Well, I understand your problem. Uh, I think many people have similar problems. Um, but I believe you're a healthy woman. I mean, you burn a lot of energy through your career. Is that bad? No, that's good. Well, you're probably right. It's not serious. You don't think I'm too fat? Well, I, no, I wouldn't really say that. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that? What? Moving away. Is my breath cold? Is it sick? I had an onion for lunch. Is my... I'm no, sorry, I... doctor. I'm sorry. Continue. Women's problems. Well, I was, <clears throat> I was just going to talk about <clears throat> the fact that the feminist movement had somewhat caused a backlash and that men had actually... Why do you keep doing that? What? Rubbing your eye. Do I have something in my eye? No, that's just kind of a, just a nervous habit uh, of mine, I guess. Oh, I am sorry. We are out of time. Dr. Rubin, what can I say? You are fantastic. This has been so enlightening. Thank you so much, Dr. Rubin, and thank you for watching next week. Nails and Lashes, please be here. And remember, you, you are, are so, so beautiful, beautiful to me. Did you think I was serious when I said anorexic? I wasn't serious. People are going to think I'm crazy. Do you think I'm neurotic or do I just have an edge? What is this? Did you see me going like that? What? Is that food? No, that's... Ow! That's my beard. Did you mean it to me like that? Yes. I don't think it works. Stay tuned for Rough Trade on Pre-Teen World, next on SCTV. Who knows Canadian Tire's the place for do-it-yourselfer mechanics. But it's also the place for don't-it-yourselfers. If you do it yourself, Canadian Tire has all the parts you'll need. If you don't it yourself, Canadian Tire's Auto Service Center has expert mechanics who'll do tune-ups, install brakes, shocks, and more. So you have time for more important things. It's Canadian Tire for those who do and those who don't. There's a lot more to Canadian Tire than tires. Introducing the SJ410, the surprise package from Suzuki. It's full of surprises, like powerful four-wheel drive maneuverability and surprisingly good fuel economy, 33 miles per gallon combined highway and city, and rugged good looks. One of the nicest surprises is its hill-flattening power. It'll climb just about anything in just about any weather. The best surprise is the price surprisingly low. Suzuki SJ410, the surprise package. Wednesday, on the nature of things, the asteroid and the dinosaur. Okay.
great asteroid that extinguished the dinosaurs actually may have fallen and produced Iceland. Then Thursday night's search for stars join Fred Davis, Arlene Duncan, Brian Mackay, and Maureen Duncan for the fifth annual Search for Stars, an impressive hour of entertainment with six of Canada's newest faces. The Nature of Things Wednesday and Search for Stars Thursday on CBC. Take a look, take a look at the best you in town. We've got you in view and everything that we do. Watch what we're doing, watch what we're doing. TV guys, review is fine. What you'd like to see, they know where you'd like to be. Watch what we're doing, watch what we're doing. Stephen Seeley. Today we have a really decent show with some really neat surprises as well as the usual stuff. Who's our special guest, Stefan? As if you didn't know, Alexis. Today on Rock Rap, we're going to talk to a Toronto band called Rough Trade. They're going to tell us all about music and playing in bars and traveling all over the place without their parents. Excellent. Now here's Glenn Milbury with some letters to Preteen World. Glenn? Glenn? Thanks, Alexis. Thanks, Maddie. Here's a letter from uh, Darren Waite of Clairview. He writes, Dear PT World, your show is so neat, even I watch it. I was, one, I was, I was wondering, do you all have grandparents? Because my grandma is, is moving in with us, and I have to uh, sleep in the rec room, and, and how do you guys... Get on TV, because I could be too. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Uh, they audition over 500 uh, kids for Preteen World, and we got picked, so it isn't easy to get on uh, uh, PT World like we did. Uh, I don't know about the rest, but uh, my grandmother is a, an agent in Los Angeles, and I have my own room and everything. Now it's time for Rock Rap. Welcome to Rock Rap. We'd like to welcome our special guest, Rough Trade. <laughs> Could you please introduce yourself? I'm Carol Pope. I'm Terry Wilkin. I'm Kevin Staples. I'm Bucky Berger. I'm David McMorrow. Decent. Decent. Okay, excellent. Let's start the rapping with Paul Rennie. Um, do you know um, Blondie? No. 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 Question? Go ahead. To the whole band. Uh, my friend Paul and I are in a band now. We're, we hope to be professional musicians one day. And we'd like to uh, further our musical educations. And the question is, do you prefer, say, a community college and what they have, as opposed to like a university with, with all they got, is it, which is gooder? Good question. Yeah. Really good. I have a question. My name is uh, Matty Wallace, and I have a question Hi, for, for Bucky. Hi. Um, how late are you allowed to stay up at night? Ooh, that's a tough one. Usually as late as room service. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for David. Mm -hmm. How old do you think I am? Tw Fifteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I don't think so. Um, do you know um, Art Garfunkel? No. 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 Okay, I have a question. Uh, in the uh, underground, it's two-parter, by the way. In the underground pop world, which is better, bondage or humiliation? Humiliation. Oh. Humiliation. Personally, I prefer discipline. Discipline, right on. Discipline. Okay, and part two is, uh, do any of the people in the group have their Red Cross swimming? Yeah. Just me. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have a question. Steve Applebaum. Oh, my hello, name. Steve. Um, I wondered, you know how most groups have, uh, well, like Moody Blues were Moody Blues, but before that they were The Moody mm -hmm. Blues. Uh, for Rough Trade, do you hate when people call you The Rough Trade? Do you know I'm the pretender? <laughs> Excellent. That's enough for rock rap. Now Rough Trade's going to do a song for us? High School Confidential. Deep that. Okay. As if you don't already know, here's Rough Trade with High School Confidential. Great. Good Well, our thanks to Rough Trade. And that's all the time we've got for Preteen World. So until next week, this is Stefan Seeley. And Alexis Shannon. Saying good night and watch out for Cooley. <laughs> is SCTV, the network with a bunch of... The Happy Homeowner with Michael C. Hammer. If you've ever built a countertop and put plastic laminate on the top of it, or maybe even built a serving tray and covered it with plastic laminate, you know how difficult it is to cut it without getting any chipping along the edge. There is a way. First of all, if you're using a portable electric saw, one of those portable circular saws or an electric jigsaw, you know that they cut in an upward motion. So
turn the plastic laminate over and cut so that any chipping that takes place takes place on the back. Now, if you're using a table saw or a radial arm saw, put the plastic laminate with the color side up because they cut downwards. And again, any chipping that takes place will take place on the back. And you should have a nice, clean, smooth cut. There is another way. After you've marked off the plastic laminate to the desired dimension, put a square on it, then use either a very sharp scratch awl or a wallboard knife and make several passes across the surface of the plastic laminate. Now, you may have to make four or five, but once you've scratched that surface, you simply turn it sideways and break it off. And that does a nice, neat job. The Happy Homeowner is a community service presentation of TV9. How many of Jupiter's satellites are larger than the Tilbury? Four. No, I'll complete the question for you, Sandwich. Larger than the planet Mercury. Karen. Five. No, it is two. What football team did O.J. Simpson play for in? You're invited to join us Saturday at 7 when students from Tilbury District High School and Sandwich Secondary School match their knowledge and skills of instant recall on Reach for the Top. Chris Tilbury. Katie is right. What's your line? Come on, give us your line. Help me, help me, I'm a fly, I'm, I'm a, fly. a fly. That's your line. What? What, pacing? Pay, what are you, method or one of those cheap boiler school and school of actors? What kind of actor are you? I am not an actor. I am a human being. An actor. Uh oh. So we were expecting an actor. See, uh, this is the rehearsal it. for 3D How to Fly. Oh, oh we made a mistake. I can't believe this obvious mistake, and we're. <laughs> Oh, no, and we, did, and we did this stuff. Where we're going with the three With the dog and the thing. And the, thing oh, the, the look on your eyes. Oh, oh, oh that's, that's funny. Oh. There's a story that, to have. Oh, I'm, I got to tell, I got to tell somebody. Oh, save it. It's good pen. Oh, Sammy Marvel. Oh. Count people. They must be after our little friend. Bruno. Oh. Let's go to our little friend to take through the secret tunnel. Oh. I'll deal with angry throngs. What do you people want? Stay out! Stay out, I tell you. We're actors in here rehearsing. Rehearsing a mighty fine new one. I'm Hugh Betcha, and welcome to Short Story Playhouse. Tonight, we're going to be presenting one of the most famous of all short story writers, O. Henry. Yes, born William Sidney Porter in 1862, O. Henry wrote hundreds of short stories over his lifetime, and he earned the reputation of a master storyteller. <laughs> and a master he was. For you see, his short stories had one distinctive characteristic, the surprise ending. <laughs> Yes, mention the name O. Henry to most people, and, well, after the usual wisecrack about the candy bar, they'll undoubtedly say the surprise or twist ending. <laughs> now, tonight, we're going to be looking at one of O. Henry's lesser-known short stories. However, it's not one without genius. It's entitled The Private Booth. Why don't we take a look at it? Alex Teacatch was a very successful man, but he was also very lonely. Every night for the past three years, he would dine by himself in a private booth at the same restaurant. But tonight would be different, for he no longer cared for food, Sir. and he no longer cared for success. Uh, toast. And so, disguising his sadness with joviality, he informed the young waiter that he would no longer be requiring his private booth. 
After I finish this uh, fine bottle of brandy, I'll take this lovely pistol and kill myself. I'm sorry I've sh shocked you. Here, allow me. You look as if you need one. Please. Please. Thank you, sir. There we go. Yes, all the way. That's what you needed. I'll, I'll have one with you now. Uh, sir, <clears throat> if I might make a suggestion. Yes, go ahead. I... I wouldn't... I wouldn't do that here. I mean... Well, I mean, after all, this is a, a private club? Yes, yes. And I will be private. Very private. <laughs> Wretch! You arrogant, aristocratic, bourgeois swine! How dare you! You've got so bloody much to be grateful about with all your experiences and all your breadth of knowledge and life and education! And I, I was raised in a family of miners, 11 of us, 11 of us digging in the dirt from the age of five on, and we had bloody nothing to be happy about, nothing at all! And this... This is a wooden leg that I got in an accident in the mine. Feel it. A wooden bloody leg. You want to kill yourself. I should be the one to kill myself. I got so much to be sorry about. You want to kill yourself? Go on, do it, do it. You're cowardly, aren't you? Well, I'll do it. You're not worth it. Get out. Get out, you wretch, you dog. <laughs> Duco Wellington. A lion! Well, oh, of all the stupid devices. I can't believe that. Boy, talk about a reach. Boy, that certainly wasn't one of O. Henry's better works, I'll tell you that cheap device, a lion, what? Why don't we find out a little bit more about that short story? Oh, here we are, O'Henry's life. <laughs> yes, a lion walks into a booth. I can't believe that. It certainly must have been... Oh, here we are. The Private Booth was one of O'Henry's last published works. Why don't we find out more about this story? Let's take a trip back in time and find out about the story and the man. A lion! A lion! Great surprise, isn't it? Well, it's so far-fetched. Oh. Where's your sense of reality? Why, why a lion? What the hell's wrong with a lion? It's, it's a good, good ending. It's a surprise. It's not like your other works, is it? It's not like your other works, is it? No, it's not like my other works. Maybe I'm going through uh, a... Change. A change. A change, yes, thank you. You can no longer write. I can no longer... No, I can write. Of you course can't. I can write. You can't, Well, you've lost it. I haven't lost it. A lion is a good ending. A good ending? It's a finish. A finish to your career. It's not a finish. It's a Maybe start. Maybe I can save it. Maybe I can rewrite it. You can't Maybe rewrite can... it. Give it to me. Like... Give it to me. <laughs> Sit there. So I'm taking this. Where it'll be appreciated. Rewrite it. Here's the surprise. A lion comes in and eats the young waiter. A lion? Yes. A lion! <laughs> well, a lion certainly was a surprise. <laughs> really, a lion. Work is not my place, but a lion is the bloody worst ending I've ever had. Come on, you can do better than that. At least, uh, at least you're not hard up for endings. <laughs> hard up for endings, huh? You Philistines, what do you know? You old socks, you know nothing. Hey, man. What? I got a right here, son. No, I don't have a right there on my way. So in comes the lion with the thing. 
Well, what did you think? I like it. You liked it? I like it. The lion? The lion. You like the lion? I like the lion. Oh, Mr. Odnick, I gotta kiss you. Oh, Will, Will, you're such a writer. Look at this. Look at all these books. You put Odnick Publishing on the map, and now this. I tried. Will. I knew you'd understand it, Mr. Odnick. Always on time for a deadline. Always with the books and the things. I try. Listen to me. Let me make a, an idea to you that might help if I were to tell to you the idea. A suggestion. Right. Go ahead, Mr. Odnick. Okay. I value your judgment. Here, Bill, page two, the suicide. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. You've got the lion. You've got the lion here. It's beautiful, furry, and cuddly, and legs. And, 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 and bring in a, a tiger, and, and a monkey, and a doggy running through a field of, of wheat Mr. looking Odnick. for a bone. Mr. Odnick. To bury. What? You missed the point, Mr. Odnick. The suicide. The lion. That was the surprise ending. Don't you get it? It's a surprise ending. Surprise ending? Didn't it surprise you? Oh, you missed the point. You don't get anything. Odnick, you're a fool. Nobody calls Odnick a fool. My hat. I broke my hat. That publisher was a moron. What does he know about surprise endings? Now, in the penitentiary, they could appreciate a good surprise ending. <laughs> and a lion. A fine surprise ending. Not one of my greatest, but good ending. Speaking of ending, I should do myself in. I can drink and do myself in. That's what I'll do. Then they'll be sorry. The lion! They don't come in the bars. I was right. How you doing, fella? Well, poor old O. Henry, done in by a lion in real life. Well, that just goes to show you that art and life are sometimes identical. The only problem is, no matter how identical they are, that was still a stupid idea for an ending for a short story. Well, I'll leave you with this message. Keep your short stories believable, or you might end up being eaten by a lion. <laughs> Until next week, this is you betcha saying good night. What was that? Hey, what are you doing to see here? Is that Elephant Man? Is that Elephant Man? Oh, I think they're chasing Elephant Man. What are you chasing him for? Oh, leave him alone. I don't know. He's a nice guy, I think. He's a nice guy. You know. Yeah, that was a good scene there. Yeah, good thanks. Uh, you set yeah, me up good that, You that. did that nice. I, I got a good feeling yeah, from it, you know? Yeah, I got a feeling. Ooh, this is my section of the pledge. What is wrong with you people? Why don't you call? Are you mad? Are you so insane and hurt, want to hurt me like that? Why? Okay. This is what's going to happen. I, Lin Yi Tang, right now, declare a curse upon you people who do not phone and send in their money so that you will be so ugly that you will have to put a bag over your head. And when you want to brush Lin. your teeth, you Whoa, won't be... Lin, Lin, <laughs> Lin, please. <Whoa. laughs> I don't think that's the way to get our viewers to subscribe to the network. <laughs> oh. You'll have to excuse Mr. Tang, ladies and gentlemen. He gets a little overzealous when it comes to keeping SCTV on the air. <laughs> What's the matter with you putting a curse on our viewing audience? I'm so sorry I made a mistake. Please forgive me. <laughs> sorry. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he is right about one thing, though, and those phones haven't been ringing. And something bad might just happen to you if that's you don't... Right. What? what is that? What's going on? Cafeteria, he bumped me and spilled my goo. Shut up! Now look, this oh. man's a human being. He just can't pull his mask off against his will. 
Oh, I've always been a defender of human rights, and if he doesn't want to take his mask off, he doesn't have to. <laughs> you want to take it off? <laughs> oh, there, there you have it. Uh, that's that. He doesn't want to take it off. Even though uh, seeing his face might uh, boost the ratings here and <laughs> put SCTV in the black. <laughs> that's right. Uh, he's not going to take his mask off if he's. You'd... Lynn! Take his mask off! Yeah! yeah. 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 Very well. Time to see your face, my friend. Oh, Aww. look how cute he is! Hey, the darling, these guys. What? The whole of those phones, they're really going at it. <laughs> well, yo, thank you. This is from billionaire Bucky Hunt. Mm -hmm. it says happy endings and cute elephants are right up his alley. Mm -hmm. He's donating $100,000. SCTV is over the hump! We wanted, and you got another week of fine programming. So, good night, and thanks for the vote of confidence. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, on under that thing, guy. Well, maybe this will uh, help cool you up. Yeah. Sticky fingers there, no guy? Look, you did a fine job. You helped built them out of thousands of dollars. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> <laughs>